Hey, this is Halls from Indie Resource. Um, first off, this is not a video tutorial for those that watch the tutorials. This is a um, kind of a show off of a game I'm working on. Um, it's a browser-based game. It has a little bit of 3D elements. Uh, before, before I get started, let me say that most of these images in here, a lot of the images, not most, are placeholders. The fonts aren't correct yet. I'm still working on it. I'm still building the features, building the 3D aspect of it to it. So uh, the big, the main thing I was just going to show off was the 3D in the browser and using the Unity game engine and the just some of the features and how everything works in it. Most of these images will change. I actually took an older game that I was working on that was a fantasy style game and I brought it into a futuristic game so there's still some fantasy elements that I've got to remove and things like that. But uh, to get started, um, basically the world is is broken into these locations and, and if you look up here um, everything is done by row and column. There's basically for every travel that you do there is a, um, a location and there's 3600 total locations per zone there's going to be about five zones so there's tons and tons of places in each one of these locations you can lumber mine search there's going to be a harvest you can build a structure you can come in here build a house a weapon shop or whatever else um, you can also enter the area and actually go into a 3d version of each area um, the area of, of what's in it like as far as, as logs or or the lumber, the trees and the rocks all depend on how much people lumber there. So if you got a lot of people lumbering next to the city, you're going to enter in here and there's not going to be a whole lot of trees. Um, and to kind of show you, you can actually go up to a tree and click on it and you can lumber. And the way the skill point system works is you have so many skill points that slowly go up throughout the day. Right now I have five. You have to roll on a 3d6 the three six-sided dice below whatever number your skill total is. Default 10 because it's a pretty easy area, but say I want to add 2 to it, I can uh, start my roll, and it'll roll each one separately. So it's going to run a little slow because I'm recording right now on my laptop. That's why the audio is a little bit out. But I roll again, I got a 5 the first time, and it just adds them all. And let's see. Okay, we're getting a 9, so basically I have to roll pretty low in order to make it because I have to get below a 12. I don't really have anything happening yet um, on this side of it because I haven't finished this part, but you can, uh, you'll can you get lumber, you'll get some kind of event happen. Same way with mining and the rocks, you can uh, harvest grass or, or certain trees or, or plants. And um, The 3D's not done yet, and, you know, I'm still kind of building the areas and testing it and everything, but uh, eventually this will be a full-fledged uh, area that you can run through and just lumber and harvest, and the trees will disappear once you harvest them and things like that. Um, and then when you're ready to leave the area, you can just travel. Um, right now I'm back inside of a, uh, a city. Cities are built by, or towns, villages. There's a village, town, and then city. Each one of those are built by whoever builds um, structures there. So if you go out in the wilderness and, you, and four people build a structure, or there's four structures built, it turns into a town, and then you keep adding after that. Um, there's, once, once it turns into a city, you automatically get a quest hall that... that Quest will be added to. Um, we have a um, an auction house that will also come in there, an inn that'll come in there after it turns into a town. If one person just goes in and builds a shop in a location, it's not going to have those because it's just a, a loan shop. But if, if you keep building a guild, let's say, just starts building in one location, it'll eventually automatically add an inn and a, a merchant and everything else. But full armor um, or full auction and just to show you real quick how this works, you can actually add your own armor. Let's say I want to sell it for 10. And somebody can come along and buy it. Now, if they do buy it, which I'll go ahead and buy my own real quick, you will receive a message saying who bought it, how much they bought it for, um, where it was at, all that good stuff. So you know what's going on whenever you're... You just go down here to your messages, and a message is automatically sent to you saying, hey, you, you just sold something. So you always know what's going on. Um, with that mess system, you all, we also also have a profile system, and I'll just show you by going to the players located here. You can go to your own profile, or you can actually see who's there and look at their profile. There's going to be an attack here as long as it's not in the town. If it's out in the wilderness, you can attack other players. But for now, you can look at their guild, you can give them money, you can send them private messages or anything like that. Um, you know, it's got a backpack system, weapon, armor, uh, spells, apparel,s rings, and necklaces. Um, you got psionics, you got your quest log. It's got a full map system. I'm still working a little bit on this map system, but it uh, basically that's me, and this is 3,600 locations. So as I move one, I only move one little bitty square, 
so it's a long ways between places it's a, it's a very large area um, the other thing it has is you know the player owned shops you also with player owned shops and I'll show it in the tannery here you can actually hire people to work in your shop and you just basically open a position and anyone who meets the requirements which this is just a required tanning of one they can um, they can actually apply for the job and take the job and basically you'll have a you'll have a requirement of how many um, in this in this case how many uh, leathers you want tanned every day and then you pay them how much ever they're paid as long as they keep up with that they'll get paid um, if they don't you can fire them and you can hire somebody else and you'll have, depending on the level of your shop, you can hire so many people, and and basically the tannery can also sell the items that that's being made, um, and that that works for the weapon shop, the armor shop, the church, everything. Um, it has a merchant, depending on how big the city is, <clears throat> that you can buy basic items and things like that. It has a full admin panel, which is, I'm still working on now. I'm still gonna. You can see the old logo still up there, but just to give you an idea, the GMs or admins can actually come in here and create a new item and have it in have it in the game instantly. They can give player items, they can uh, create weapons, they can add new events. Um, events pop up as you travel. It has a full battle system. When as you travel, the creatures will attack you. If you can't just leave battle, if you do, it'll it'll pop up and say, "Hey, you still got somebody to, to fight." Um, it's got a full chat system, so you, so people can chat real time um, and it has a, a game event system for uh, events that will actually be full map events to where it affects everyone on the map whether it's a uh, attack of something or some kind of creature you can actually go into the game events and take part in uh, different events like that